Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, there are two stories uh, running today, one fairly serious and then the other one just more comical than anything. I thought I'd share them with you today, and they're both automotive-related because that's uh, kind of what I like to do with my channels, go auto automotive-related news. And so today, what I thought I'd share with you is this snowman. We'll get the humorous one out of the way, and then we'll talk more seriously about the other one later. Uh, and that has to do with uh, GM's real people ads that you are probably sick of seeing. But first off, let's talk about the snowman in question in front of you. And what you see from Cody Lutz here is uh, out of P Petersburg, Kentucky, has had a fair amount of snow recently. And what they did was they decided to build a snowman, which is great. And it's a huge flipping snowman. That uh, second snowball there is probably hard to get up there. So pretty impressive. Now, there's always some dingus out there who wants to ruin the fun for everybody and decided that um, you know what I'm gonna ram that snow uh, snowman with my car so what they decided to do was hit it now the thing is, is they didn't know but Cody knew was that there was a giant <laughs> tree stump under that snowman and you can see the aftermath here of what they tried to do and uh, according to <laughs> according to Cody here what they didn't count on was the massive stump under the center. Life is hard, but it's much harder when you're stupid. Yep. So what was funny is, here's the thing. Here's the thing I didn't notice is, look. Uh, look where the tire tracks are. Look where the snowman is. And look where the relation is to the house. My question is, what was your plan after you hit the snowman? Were, were you going to were you gonna drive into the house? How drunk were you doing this? But, you know, I... <laughs> I suppose from the uh, look of the grill marks on the, <laughs> there's this looks like a pickup truck from the grill marks here in the, on the uh, snowman itself, uh, they probably learned their lesson and uh, got their got their comeuppance. Now, uh, the second piece that's a little bit more serious is this part about Chevy's ads, uh, real people ads, and you've probably seen these before, and they are um, f fairly, you know, fairly old and a little tiring at this point. Uh, but the premise is, is if you if you haven't seen them and been living under a rock for the last 10 years, are they seemingly get random people and uh, show them brand new cars and the, the, the people who don't know what's going on just react naturally. So there's a couple things that you should probably know just right off the bat. Um, I like all cars and I, you know, I'm a, I'm a car person. I like all cars. I, I like German cars. I like Asian cars. I like American cars. It uh, doesn't matter. I'm a car person. European Asian, American, doesn't matter. Uh, I tend to lean towards the GM side, so just kind of in full disclosure, that is something that I uh, tend to, tend to like, I like the Corvettes, Camaros, you know, Chevy trucks, that sort of thing. So just full disclosure out of the way, but I will say that the Chevy ads are getting a little, a little tiresome. And now somebody is saying that their claim is a little bit under fire. Now, uh, I'm one of those people, and probably weird uh, folks, who tend to read the small print when uh, any ad is being shown to me. I'm a skeptical person, and anything that somebody is showing me and trying to prove to me, I am looking for proof that is uh, hard to deny. So when I look at these ads, I always read the small print, and I always see, you know, the little things that they're trying to say. You know, like, it's like every time there's a new record in sports, well, you know, it's on a Sunday with a full moon and there's only four players and those four players happen to be named Tim and it's, uh, you know, he's the only one to ever hit three baskets, you know, under those conditions, right? So and it's kind of getting a little point where they're, you know, the records are a little, a little tiresome. So I always look for the little asterisk and, and ask myself, is this a legit record of any noteworthy value? And so I'm skeptical. So when I look at these... I read the small print, and it looks like somebody finally did too. And now they're getting uh, a little in, in hot water here. So uh, if you look at uh, the ad series that they have, and this is a, a, a good representation here in front of us, uh, you will notice that they use a lot of JD Power things. Now, Consumer Reports and JD Power are two different sources of information. And I've heard the claim that uh, oh yeah, uh, you know companies pay JD Power to say whatever they want. It's a bought prize, and the answer is no, it's not. Um, they pay for the data because that takes uh, some doing to get data. Just like somebody would pay Google to buy their data, whatever data set they're looking for. Now, um, 
JD Power has a lot of categories, so it's not super hard to win one of them or be first in it, especially when you start manipulating statistics. So uh, the fact that they have a number of these doesn't really shock me. And the evidence that I have uh, towards this indicates that, look, if it were really a bought ad, it would diminish the value of it immediately. So you, they have to have some reputation, some ability to remain, um, you know, have some authority in the market. So if they were to say, look, um, this is just an ad, and I just slapped my name on it, and I paid for it, that it doesn't really hold any weight. So it's really not in Chevrolet or Ford or Toyota or Honda's best interest to buy an award. It's, it, it would become meaningless overnight and it would be money ill spent and it would taint their reputation. So in, in, in that regard, um, JD Power does not sell awards. They do sell data. So that's, that's the part where you, where you see it. So GM did pay for this data, but they did not pay for the award. And if we look at uh, the car and driver report that you see in front of me, you will have probably seen a number of these different um, ads. And the thing that you have to know about these ads is that they uh, are random people off the street, sort of. Look at the location, Los Angeles, okay? Most people wanna be actors, right? Wanna get their name out there. And um, they do get paid for doing it. Of course, you read the fine print at the bottom of the screen. And what you'll find is those folks, um, you know, know the game. It's a game. If you don't think it's a game, then you, you need to dig a little deeper because what these folks are doing is they know that if they want to get on TV or if they want to get their face out there, they have to act shocked, surprised, excited, amazing. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Wow. And what you will see is people with outlandish reactions. And that's the ones they print. Like, you know, the one where they debadged the Malibu and they said, oh, that's the new BMW or Audi. Like, and you just kind of, anybody with any not car sense kind of rolls their eyes and goes, geez. But then you realize what's even more sad is these ads work. Um, they sell cars. That's what they're there to do. So am I knocking on GM for putting out an effort? No, it's what they do. That's advertising. Um, I don't necessarily, you know, it's not the way they go about doing it. That's a different story. But um, the the part that you will uh, that I think is important in this article is if you go down and you will talk about the skeptical folks here. Uh, this wasn't the reliability claim that people had talked about. So Consumer Reports is one thing, and JD Power is another. And they were talking about specifically 2015 model year, and that's the the part that. Uh, people are taking umbrage with. So um, that's the issue. They're saying that, yep, the, in, in initial quality, they won this XYZ award in these number of different areas for the 2015 model year. Now, the uh, issue that people are saying is, well, you're putting up there a 2018, 2019 car, yet saying the, 2000, the award you got was from 2015. See what I mean? It's a little misleading. So GM has responded to this, and what they have said is, and here it is at the very top of it, on the 16th, so it was yesterday, um, Chevrolet will pull the advertised, discussed in the opinion uh, column after it was named, or after named competitors uh, complained about standards used to claim Chevy as most reliable. According to the report, national airings have ceased. Local broadcasts may continue, probably because they have it, and of course it's still going to be on YouTube, because of course it's YouTube. So we'll update the context, but the, the quote that's at the very end uh, kind of got me pretty good, which was, you know, Andy Rooney, nothing in the fine print is ever good news, right? So if you're like me, here's what I'm going to say. Always read the fine print. Always question where your data is coming from, good, bad, or otherwise. And if you're saying to yourself, wow, I totally agree with whatever that thing is, doesn't matter what it is, political ad, car ad, doesn't matter. Read the fine print for yourself and make sure that what you are believing is backed up by something that is fairly irrefutable and not just opinion or manipulation of data. So anyway, those are the two big things for today. I'll catch you later.